Here is part two of our previous video. We were talking about the price. Carlos Tizi, CEO of Stellantis and Jeep, who is also ahead of the curve in this regard, by doing away with the expensive battery packs that come with conventional hybrid cars. In addition to being less expensive, the hybrid air system is also easier to install and maintain. Additionally, it allows for design flexibility in the passenger compartment without sacrificing trunk space. But you might be thinking why is the Jeep CEO against EVs? The electric vehicle, once celebrated as the savior of our planet, is now facing intense scrutiny, led by none other than Carlos Tavares, the CEO of Stellantis. Stellantis represents a conglomerate of 12 automotive giants, including well-known brands like Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, and Dodge. Tavares has injected doubt into the EV narrative, challenging its fundamental premises. During the inaugural Freedom of Mobility Forum hosted by Stellantis, Tavares painted a grim picture of the EV landscape. While the world is rushing to replace 1.3 billion gas-guzzling vehicles with cleaner electric alternatives, Tavares has raised concerns about the viability and sustainability of this transition. The CEO raised doubts about the feasibility of implementing such a significant change. The primary concern is resource scarcity, particularly regarding lithium, which is essential for EV batteries. There's uncertainty about its abundance, and even if available, bureaucratic hurdles and geopolitical tensions surrounding its extraction could pose significant challenges potentially turning the transition to EVs into a logistical nightmare. Consider if we were to abandon combustion cars, EVs. What about the fact that manufacturing these batteries depletes rare earth metals, causing a substantial amount of emissions, implementing a direct ban on internal combustion, IC, cars while shifting to EVs priced over $50,000 with limited range and gimmicky technology might not be a viable solution. Is something companies should really be ashamed of. All the countries in the EU Germany voted against combustion cars, echoed by the sentiments of car makers like BMW and Porsche, who have been working on developing their own alternative fuels. However, the financial implications of the push towards electric vehicles are equally concerning. EVs already cost around 40% more than their internal combustion counterparts. A potential combustion ban could further escalate prices. For instance, the Ford F-150 Lightning has been priced at over $100,000, and new EVs entering the market are also experiencing sky-high prices. Virus commented, I know making EVs is pricey but we can't just pass those costs on to the customers and expect them to pay those prices. While acknowledging that the regulations essentially dictate you sell EVs or you die, he offered an alternative that could result in a very fast 50% decrease in carbon dioxide emissions, on average, by replacing cars aged 15 years or older with modern equivalents such as the new compression air engine. Automotive giants like General Motors, Ford, Hyundai, and Rivian are already contending with increasing costs of battery materials and the complexities introduced by new EV tax credit incentives, which offer discounts on domestically manufactured cars. This indicates a precarious state for the automotive industry with potentially divisive policies. Additionally, it's worth noting that cheap, Two, has felt the impact of market shifts, being compelled to embrace electric vehicles and experiencing a steady decline in sales, along with a diminishing brand reputation. In 2015, a Jeep Wrangler would cost you between $35,000 to $38,000. Fast forward to 2023, and the price has surged to a staggering $52,000. This substantial price increase isn't solely due to inflation or supply chain disruptions. It's a deliberate strategy by Stellantis to reposition Jeep as a luxury brand. However, this strategic move, coupled with quality control issues, has negatively impacted Jeep's reputation. Automakers such as Stellantis, 
Ford and GM find themselves in a tough spot as they either have to sell their EVs at a loss or subsidize their EV losses using profits from their IC engine business. This trend has also been observed with VW, which has had to lower the prices of their ID3 model multiple times in China just to stay competitive in the market. Furthermore, Adding to the challenge are the luxury features that are increasingly becoming standard in EVS, further complicating the pricing dynamics for automakers. I mean, take automated car parking, for instance, or even the ridiculous subscription for heated seats by BMW. With all this happening, the day isn't far when companies force you to pay a monthly subscription to even drive your car. Tavares has repeatedly emphasized that the middle class will be priced out of the EV market if automakers can't absorb the additional production costs. If subsidies are the only way to make EVs affordable, what happens when they are rolled back, even with a less aggressive EV strategy? Compared to its Detroit counterparts, Stellantis finds itself in an unstable situation. Their flagship electric pickup, the Ram 1500 Rev is expected to come with a gasoline-fueled range extender, hinting that the CEO isn't fully on board with electrification. Imagine a car that returns 120 miles per gallon, has nearly zero tailpipe emissions, and is priced affordably. Sounds like a dream, right? Do you think Cheap's new engine could overthrow EVs? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And remember to subscribe for more insights into the latest automotive trends and innovations.